Hi, everyone, and welcome. It's the ICBA Morning News for today, Friday, September 29th, 2023, the last work day of Q3. We're almost there. All right, I'm going to give you the heads up today on how some small businesses are being hamstrung by Ottawa, the uh, BC deficit and some of the fallout, and then how technology is changing construction and how it's not. All right. Again, if you ever need the source, uh, the links to these sources, icbaindependent.ca, that's www.icbaindependent.ca. We would post some media links here on Facebook, but we can't because of the Trudeau government's foolish online news act. All right, let's get to the first story. Small businesses. This has been a um, uh, unfolding problem for a long time now. So small businesses, many of whom were decimated by government restrictions during the pandemic, continue to get kicked around by the Trudeau government now. The pandemic loan program's stringent criteria have left countless businesses out in the cold. While ministers boast of the 850,000 businesses that have received over $46 billion in loans, they overlook those who couldn't access the funds due to the program's limitations, and others who have no viable path to pay the loans back in the timeline government is demanding. So our friends over at the Canadian Federation of Independent Business are doing a lot of work on this. Kudos to Dan Kelly and the team there. And Dan told the Financial Post today, uh, uh, talking about the Trudeau government, they can find billions of dollars in a matter of weeks to fund battery plants, but yet extending time for small businesses to repay a loan seems to be an area where Ottawa is all of a sudden becoming fiscally conservative. Now, I'm man, am I ever with Dan on the hypocrisy of this? Like, this is bananas to me. So you have a government that never met a deficit they didn't like. Never. You know, the, the budget will balance itself. You know, remember that line from uh, Justin Trudeau and former finance minister Bill Morneau. So they hand out billions of dollars in loans during the um, uh, pandemic. And then they put the payback uh, path, just it's just too difficult for small businesses to make that uh, payback in time. So instead of extending the deadline and uh, encouraging people to continue to kind of whittle it down, they're demanding the money uh, at the end of the year. Now, <laughs> again, Dan Kelly's right. They found billions and billions and billions of dollars for two battery plants in Ontario. They found billions and billions of dollars to buy the Trans Mountain Pipeline when they didn't need to. All they had to do was approve it in a timely fashion and the private sector would have built it for them for much cheaper than what uh, the government has uh, built it for. They find billions of dollars for all these things, but they can't find the money to help small businesses out. Small businesses are the engine of the economy in Canada. We all know that. I don't know why government refuses to, uh, to understand that. All right, going over to British Columbia. The fallout, the analysis, it all continues on the EB government's shocking Q1 fiscal report. It showed BC is on track for a $6.7 billion deficit this year, two and a half billion dollars more than expected, and a full billion dollars more than the COVID pandemic year. Think how bad the economy was that year, with you know, entire sector shut down. This is actually a worse deficit than that. Now, two comments resonate in the analysis. First, Laura Jones from our friends at the Business Council of British Columbia on how the NDP are missing a vision for the future. It's not just about spending, it's about growing revenue as well. And the best way to grow revenue, of course, is to grow the economy. So Laura says, quote, the importance of growing the economy can't be overstated. Growth gives us hope and means more resources for everything from hiring more teachers to developing more social housing. Shrinking economies force tough trade-offs that no one wants to face like which programs get less. Of course, she's referring to the fact that the per capita spending of the NDP government is um, at an all time high, but the per capita economic, uh, the GDP per capita for British Columbia is continuing to fall. In fact, uh, growth, uh, economic growth for British Columbia is now projected at less than 1% next year. And uh, it will actually shrink when you consider uh, the per capita, uh, the per capita formula rather than just a lump sum. And then there's Von Palmer of the Vancouver Sun, who says, the NDP era is more about expanding government and spending, spending, spending. It's also one where debt, deficits, and overruns appear to be of little concern. Now, he adds little concern to the public. It's very clearly, it's a very little concern to David Eby, to Katrine Conroy, and to the folks running the NDP government. I would argue that the public is, uh, should be very concerned about this and will become very concerned about this as they realize that we are handing off billions of dollars of debt to our kids and grandkids, um, all because we have a government that right now can't manage the economy properly, has no vision to grow it, um, and has no desire to see the economic pie uh, expand in BC. All right, and finally, our last story. Uh, it's 
uh, from Site News, our good friends at Site News, who interviewed Mark Bryant of PCL Construction about how technology is transforming the construction industry. Now, Mark emphasized the importance of innovation, especially in areas like augmented reality and 3D modeling. However, he did warn against uh, warn businesses against adopting technology just for the sake of being uh, cool or just for the sake of adopting something. Instead, he urged a strategic approach, ensuring that any tech adoption aligns with genuine business needs. Pretty common sense, good stuff from Mark. For small business owners in construction, this is a call to be both tech savvy and strategic ensuring that technology truly serves the business. It's not just a flashy addition. Again, great insight from Mark. He'll be one of the uh, 30 plus speakers at ICBA's Construction Innovation Summit, October 30th to 31st in Vancouver. Tickets, by the way, are going fast for that event. You can get them now though, at www.icba.ca slash CIS, icba.ca slash CIS. All right, that's it for uh, this week at ICBA. I look forward to talking to you all again. Our next daily news update will be Tuesday. And uh, yeah, we'll check in then. In the meantime, you got a story that we should add to this? Send it over, jordan at icba.ca. Have a great weekend, guys.